Good morning. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, the video I'm doing today is on uh, Yamaha cold start valves. Um, I get asked about these regularly. They're, uh, it's a little electric valve that uh, acts like the choke for, uh, for your four-stroke outboard. Um, I get asked about these because people don't understand how they work. And generally I get asked to get, order new ones because they think that's why their outboard's not starting. Uh, the truth is, is uh, I've never had to replace one of these. They're uh, surprisingly reliable. Uh, this one's 20 years old. Uh, this, this is off a uh, 2002 uh, 60 horse Yamaha. Uh, it actually has four carburetors and two of these cold start valves. Uh, it's actually in for a cold start problem. doesn't like to start cold. We've found the problem and I'll, uh, I'll explain that to you as well. Um, but uh, first I'm going to show you how this valve works. So I'm going to set the, I'm going to move the camera around here a little bit. And so here's our valve sits on the side of the carburetor like that. Top, bottom, float bowl. Um, I've already had this one off, um, so we're gonna, uh, where are we gonna start here? Let's pull this part here off. It's This bit is held on with a uh, just a little clamp here like this. It's held on there, held into place. So we take that clamp out and pull this valve out. This is a, uh, this valve operates two things. Controls air with this part here and fuel here. When the engine's cold, this valve is pulled up and allows extra fuel to flow into the engine and extra air. It's just like pulling your choke on, um, except this is a valve to control it. When the engine warms up, this valve, the whole assembly slides out closes off your fuel, closes off your air. It does it very, very slowly. So to test this valve, because everybody wants to test them and make sure that it's actually working, you simply apply 12 volts to these two wires here. Inside here, there's a little heating coil and a wax pellet. As it heats up, it expands and closes your valve off. When it cools down, it shrinks. You're not even gonna be able to see this move, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our verniers here. We're gonna measure this step distance here, just like that. And we'll come in nice and close there so you can see what I'm measuring there. There you go, measuring that height. Now we're gonna take 12 volts from our battery here. I got a little test battery up here. Connect one wire there. The other wire here. Now this takes a couple of minutes, just like warming up your motor. Um, you're, like I said, you're not gonna see that move. You need to actually measure it. But while we're waiting for that to warm up, and if it's cool in your shop or where you're working, you can actually feel it get a little bit warm. It doesn't get hot, just feel it get a little bit warm. So this is the valve body. Um, oh, one thing I should, should have mentioned earlier is that uh, these valves come in two colors. There's white ones and the black ones. Most of them that I see are the white ones. They're on the smaller motors. This is a bigger motor, so it has a bigger valve. That uh, seems to be the only difference that I'm aware of. Um, I was able to uh, dig around out in the uh, in the scrap pile out there and found uh, a white one. Um, we're working on a black one, um, but I wanted to show you the white one here. There, uh, I see the white ones far more often than I see the black ones. Uh, held on with the same sort of clamp. Uh, the the valve assembly is a little bit smaller. Uh, this is one of four carburetors off of a ninety horse, I think it was. Uh, but uh, works in the exact same principle as uh, what we're explaining in this video. This is just the white version of it. 
this is our valve body. This is nice. Uh, this one comes off of the carburetor, and that's why I chose to uh, to do this video here. So uh, let's get a pen here, and I'll show you what we're talking about. So this valve sits up in here like this, still warming up. I can actually feel that it's a little bit warm there now. This is our air valve here, or the opening for the air valve. And uh, I can see now that it's already closed off. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can see up in there, but uh, the, the opening is closed off. I'm going to just move those wires out of the way a bit. Uh, when it's, uh, let's just disconnect that now that it's warmed up. When it's cold, that opening there, you can actually see into there. That's where your air flows into your carburetor. So that makes it idle faster when, it, when the engine's cold. When it's warm, that valve closes off like that and it goes back to your regular idle speed of six or 700 RPM. When it's cold, it opens it up and lets more air in. This, this um, nozzle here, this is where your extra fuel comes in. It picks it up off of the bottom of the, uh, the float bowl here from this little tube there. And this all sits here like so. So the extra fuel comes in, comes up here, and goes into the engine there. So you get air, extra air going in and extra fuel going in. And it's all controlled by this valve here. So now that we've uh, generated some sparks and warmed it all up, I'm going to zoom in here and uh, show you the difference in the height. So you can see now, right there where my, uh, my finger is, it's a little bit blurry, but uh, you can see that gap there, or if we measure it this, uh, no, got to do it that way. You can see that's about oh, one and a half millimeters longer now. So it is expanded, closed off your air, closed off your fuel. This valve still works 20 years later. So that's really how you test it. There are, in the Yamaha manuals, there are actual dimensions for uh, how much it's supposed to move and after so much time and all that. Uh, I can't tell you what those are, um, but I can look at the valve and see that it opens and closes the, uh, the air valve uh, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. So we'll get these wires out of the way before we cause any more sparks. Uh, so, so that's how this valve works. Pretty straightforward, uh, surprisingly simple and incredibly reliable. Uh, I've never replaced one, uh, but I get asked all the time to order them in. Oh, it won't start when it's cold. So um, I generally tell them to bring it in and I'll test it for them. And then I point them in the right direction. So what did we find wrong with our Yamaha outboard that was hard, hard starting cold? Well, this one's 20 years old. Uh, and what happens with any 20 year old motor is uh, your seals start to go hard. Uh, plain and simple. Uh, we'll start with these ones right here. Uh, this is uh, this bolts up to the side of your carburetor there, just like that. These rubber seals here, this is an O-ring type seal. It's just gone hard uh, and flattened out. This is a very low hour motor too. It doesn't get much use, but uh, it's still, let me just pop that out of there. It's gone flat. So, we'll compare it to our new one here, and you're not going to be able to see this, so I'm going to measure them and show you the difference. So we measure across the, uh, the circle there. That is uh, 35 thousandths of an inch. This is the worn out one. This is the one that's been flattened over 20 years. Take a new one and measure that and we are at 47 thousandths of an inch. So this one is 12 thousandths of an inch fatter. When we put that in there, it's going to seal. Now this is gonna be, this is a little bit tricky to show you. Push that in so it locks in. 
I don't know if I can show you how that looks there. No, you're not going to be able to see that. But I can see now that the uh, the O-ring seal, the rubber seal, is slightly proud of the uh, of the body there. So I know that when I tighten it down, it's going to seal up tight. When I had the old one in there, I'll just pop this out again. Put it on the right way up. Put this on there and uh, it is actually flush. There's no, uh, there's no compression on that rubber at all, so it's not going to seal, particularly when it's cold and hard and, uh, and it's shrunk a little bit. Now, that's not the only place that we get a leak. So, let me explain. Um, when this leaks, the uh, the fuel, and this is it's mostly aimed at fuel because when they're hard starting cold, it's too much air getting in there. Um, the engine is sucking fuel out of this hole, but if this seal here isn't sealing properly, it's easier for it to suck air than it is for it to suck the liquid fuel. So it will uh, it'll suck air through there and give you a lean condition, which is causes hard starting. Now, not only those seals, but this one here on the end of the carburetor. This one's swollen a little bit since it's been out. I've had this carburetor apart for about a week now waiting for parts. But that O-ring there. So this would be your carburetor to manifold gasket seal. Um, and if we measure that one, it comes in at 80 thousandths of an inch. And that's the same one. This is the new one. And that's at 95. So same thing. It has shrunk. It's gone flat. You're not going to be able to see it, but we'll try and do a little comparison there. How does that... I don't know if that really shows up or not. 15 thousandths of an inch is hard to see on the camera. But when we put this in, it's very proud. Let's see if you can see there. Yeah, you can see that the black is a little bit proud there. If I hold it just right, that's what you're looking for on an O-ring seal like this. Now, this setup here with four carburetors has this little manifold adapter and temperature isolator plate. This black plastic part isolates the heat from the carburetors. Uh, this bit bolts up to the motor, which actually gets quite hot. So, uh, we also have seals on this. Um, and these ones are also a problem in this case. Now, when you look at these seals, if you're not sure what you're looking at, they don't look too bad, you know, there's a there's an O-ring in there, it looks pretty good. But when you pop it out and have a look at it side on, you can see that it is flattened. Um, and the same thing when you put a straight edge across it, it's, uh, if you put a straight edge over it, like so, um, there's no compression on that rubber seal. And then underneath your heat insulator, there are more seals that have also gone flat. So what we've got are multiple places now in this intake system where the engine's getting too much air. To start a cold engine, you want it a little bit rich. You want more fuel uh, and you want more air as well, but you need a richer air fuel ratio. Uh, you want the more air so that it idles a little bit faster and you want more fuel so that it's a, a richer air fuel mixture. I'm not going to get into the, the, uh, the, uh, the details of all of that, but basically uh, you need to choke the engine so that you get more fuel so that it runs when it's cold. Once it warms up, you don't need it really rich. So when you've got a little bit of air leaking here, a little bit of air leaking here, little bit of air leaking here and on the other side you then have a lean mixture with not enough fuel uh, and hard starting. So that's your cold start system uh, on a, a Yamaha outboard. 
this little valve here, um, generally not the problem. Uh, other things you want to look for if you have trouble with cold starting are your fuel supply. <clears throat> In this case, for this one here, it's real easy because this bolts off of the side. You've got this supply hose here that comes off the bottom of the float bowl. Um, you can check to see that extra that the uh, the passageways are clear and there's no blockage, um, so that the extra float fuel flows through there. So in this case here, we can follow the hose all the way through. It goes to this passageway here, which when we flip it over, we see is right here. And we can see that there's nothing down in there that's blocking that pickup. We can run, uh, we can blow compressed air or WD-40 or something through there and make sure that it's flowing, which I will do when I put all this together. But um, <clears throat> this carburetor is, is clean. Um, there's not a lot of garbage or dirt or anything in there, so that's not, not our cold start issue. Uh, the other thing with a cold start problem um, is check your basics. Uh, clean engine oil, uh, compression, check your compression. Uh, and spark plugs. Um, you got to start with all those basics. Um, clean fuel, clean carburetors. I'm going to do another video on uh, uh, how to uh, how to really diagnose uh, and make sure that your carburetors are clean and uh, check all the circuits and things like that. So uh, this one was just about our trusty cold start valve for the Yamaha. So hopefully that helped. If you've got any questions, uh, let's just zoom back up to my ugly mug. There we go. If you've got any questions, feel free to uh, contact us at Canada Wide Marine. Always happy to help you out. Uh, if you need any parts, we can get all the parts you need for your boat from carburetor parts, original Yamaha carburetor parts to uh, Sierra Aftermarket. Uh, we also do all the uh, all the fun stuff like tow tubes and fishing equipment and things like that. So anything that you need for your boat, we can get it for you at Canada Wide Marine. Thanks for joining me.